Hello everyone, so this video and some other videos I'll be releasing with similar names are intended to show you projects that I considered but didn't make it off the ground for a variety of reasons. Don't be disappointed in thinking you missed out on a Let's Play, because these test videos, while they were recorded like the first part of a Let's Play, were simply made to determine whether I could even complete the project to start with. This one is for Time Crisis 4, which I primarily wanted to share because of the first-person adventure sections and the hilarious, over-the-top cheesy storyline with characters and plot points that rivaled Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear Solid in terms of ridiculousness. So while I loved this game a lot and adored the presentation and story and music and almost everything, I just couldn't get behind the light gun sections that comprise the main gameplay, which as you can imagine is a bit of a problem. That doesn't change the fact that this is a wonderful game, and the only reason the project didn't make it is because I knew that I couldn't give it what it deserved in my recordings. Maybe someday, but it's not looking likely for who I am right now. That being said, I do hope you enjoy this test video, and if the game looks interesting, go buy it, or watch someone else play through the complete game, because it's really goofy and fun. I'll see you around. Captain Rush, it's been a while. Try to gather as much information as possible before the BSSE agents arrive. You're finished! William Rush. Giorgio Bruno. Evan Bernard. I look forward to working with you, Captain. Elizabeth Conway. Go, go! There's another one! Bunch of annoying little flies. Wild dog. Oh man, they're back! Gregory Barrows. Leave them to me. I can't access its controls. Crisis 4. Captain Rush. It's been a while. Yes, it has, Lieutenant General Garfield. Brigadier General Maxwell. Let's get right down to business, Captain. We need you to investigate a terrorist organization. Which one, sir? It's a group based in Europe called WOLF. Western Order Liberation Front. This is going to be one hell of a mission. They'll do whatever it takes to complete their objectives. According to our intelligence reports, WOLF is after one of our top secret military weapons. The investigation results show that the information obtained is reliable. But we can't discern which weapon they're after or who their contact is. We suspect that it might be an inside job, although we have no details. Captain? That's why we need you to investigate warehouses, to find the WOLF hideout. We'll assign you a surveillance aircraft and one of our best information analysts. First Lieutenant Elizabeth Conway. She's an expert when it comes to processing information. I look forward to working with you, Captain. The surveillance craft is able to command our entire military. Of course, I'll also be on board to issue commands. One other thing. Apparently, the EU has already decided to send two VSSE agents over here. They're scheduled to arrive at the airport this afternoon. They'll be working with you on this mission. Try to gather as much information as possible before the VSSE agents arrive. Yes, sir.
going in. First Lieutenant Conway. Keep me updated. Yes, sir. You can call me Beth, Captain. Okay, Beth. I copy. Just beyond the warehouses is the harbor facility you're looking for. I'll display your destination on the radar. Captain, I'm detecting several enemies headed your way. Hello everyone and welcome to Time Crisis 4, and I realize this probably wasn't what you were expecting. Time Crisis 4 added a first-person shooter mode in addition to the traditional light gun shooting. In these sections we play as William Rush instead of the VSSE agents, and we can control our character movement freely. These sections remind me a bit of Counter-Strike Condition Zero's single-player campaign, except a lot less frustrating. They are rather lengthy though, especially in comparison to the light gun sections. Also, we can refill our health by standing still. That may seem a bit excessive, but it will be important later. Machine gun! According to the information I have, the warehouses to the north serve as WOLF's hideout. We have three separate health bars, which are just hits in the light gun mode. But since every shot of the enemy has the capacity to hit us here, we need more health. This first level is a bit easy, but after we take out these three enemies down here, we're going to encounter something that actually might hurt us a little bit. It's an enemy jeep. And all enemy jeeps have machine guns on top. To get rid of the machine gun, you can just blow up the jeep, or wait until someone mans the machine gun and then shoot the person off. But blowing up the jeep is a more permanent solution. The best gun for blowing up the jeep is your machine gun, because it deals the most damage quickly. As Elizabeth was telling us, we could lower the bridge by entering this room, and it was marked on our radar as all our objectives will be. These guys look pretty well trained. They look like terrorist reinforcements. The details are unknown. Both sides spread out. This area, I assume, is meant to teach you about strafing, which is the best way to avoid enemy fire. The enemies are incapable of aiming where you're going and can only aim where you are at, so strafing is the best way to avoid them. So we could just head forward from here, but there are some uh, some extra things this way. Nothing too important, but there are, there are a few hidden areas throughout the game, so I might as well show some of them. These are some very shiny shipping containers. Looks like that wrapping you find on cereal bars. Anyway, the secret is that there are two enemies back here behind these crates. But there's also an extra grenade pickup inside this thing. Or rather, underneath it. I'm not going to be using the grenades that much during this level, but I can think of at least one place where we'll want them. I'm not sure that we'll want to want them, but necessity is the mother of grenade usage. Right there I was just making sure that all of my guns were loaded, in case, you know, we need to switch between them in mid-combat if one of them runs out of ammo. We don't walk that fast, in case you haven't noticed. I suppose that would bother some people, but I don't find it too irritating. There's a guy on top of this shipping container that I always seem to forget about. We can crouch on command in Time Crisis 4, but uh, crouching is not the same thing as taking cover. So don't confuse the FPS mode with the light gun mode. Crouching does not protect you. We're going to be making liberal use of our handgun, because it kills most weaker enemies in a single hit, and there's no reason to waste the ammo of our better guns. Right up here is the first enemy with a riot shield. I recommend using the shotgun against them, because the shotgun's uh, bullets spread out. And with the spread out bullets, you're more likely to hit one of their body parts instead of just their shield. There's a guy on top of the shipping container that I completely forgot was there. But that's okay. We can snipe at them with our handgun. 
which shoots an incredibly large bullet. I don't think we've had to stand still more than once to refill our life yet. That's because there have been some life pickups here and there. They get less frequent as the game goes on. If this level seems easy, I really want to stress that the rest of the game is just as difficult as you would expect from Time Crisis, which is to say very. I anticipated it to be a lot less difficult when I first started playing. This is telling us that we can zoom in, which just means we squint our eyes really hard. It is useful for shooting enemies far away, but the zoom is not that great. There are a lot of enemies hiding behind the containers that we won't be able to see from up here, so we just have to go down and greet them ourselves. They're in the open area past the first, uh, first half of the shipping containers. You can definitely use your handgun to take them out if you want to, but the machine gun would probably be easier. This is the first part where you're likely to actually take some damage, and I do not recommend hopping on top of the shipping containers to take them out. That will make you even more vulnerable. I recommend coming out here through one of the holes, scooting back to the right and going back in another hole, and then repeating it, but in reverse this time. You should be able to sweep most of the area if you do this successfully, and no matter what you're going to take some damage, but it's better than just running in there. Now from here it would seem that we could just head straight forward, right? Enemy helicopter approaching from the north. Machine gun. The first thing you want to do when you hear the helicopter approaching is get back behind these crates because the helicopter spawns more normal enemies. And they won't chase after you back here, but if you're in front of the crates then they'll shoot at you while you're trying to take out the helicopter, which is bad. The best way to take out the helicopter, as with most vehicles, is with your machine gun. Using the shotgun or pistol is just a joke, don't do it. And now it's safe to take out those newly spawned enemies without worrying about the helicopter. It's just some normal goons, so your pistol should do the trick just fine. And this time when we try to head forward, a helicopter doesn't attack us, so that's a plus. We can't drive the forklift, sadly. I would have loved to drive the forklift. I can't imagine what kind of tactical advantage that would provide, but it would be fun. Back there, Elizabeth said that she was pretty sure those were terrorist reinforcements, but not entirely, and that's not a good sign. Usually, you want to have a really clear idea of who you're fighting. There are a few enemies bunched together in this tiny corridor. Well, I guess it's not that tiny, but it's tiny relative to how huge the game is. And back in this hole they keep jumping out of is our first bulletproof vest. It adds a layer of armor past our health bar, so we'll take damage to our armor instead of our health. It is pretty sweet, but all of them are off the beaten path, so you need to look for them even if it's only as, as much looking as, hey, I tilted my head to the right. Right ahead of us is a jeep with another machine gun on top of it, so we're going to blow it up before we even get there. We don't want to get any give anyone any time to get inside of it. There's also a few enemies around the corpse of the jeep, but they're not too difficult to take out by themselves, even if they do think they're being sneaky. Handgun. The enemy is hiding in the surrounding area. They won't go down easily. Please be careful. This is the first time we meet an enemy with a rocket launcher. They hurt, but they go down very quickly as you just saw. And right up here are a lot of enemies hiding behind some boxes, like a whole ton. One of them is even standing on top of a crate with another rocket launcher. It's impossible to take them all out immediately, no matter how fast you shoot, so you're inevitably going to have to duck behind the crates at some point. Thankfully, we still have our body armor, which means a few rockets aren't going to stop us, even if they do hit us right in the face. Before you proceed further, you want to look on top of the gas tanks to see if there are any enemies that are sniping at you from behind. And if there aren't, then usually you're all good to go, but sometimes there'll be a single straggler. Not that bad, though. Especially since you can refill your health by standing still. This is another long corridor with not that many places to take cover in between enemies. 
It's ideal for the machine gun, which is good at long range combat. There's a guy right here who shoots at you from behind. I always seem to forget he's there. But after he's gone, you can you can safely take cover behind this crate. And with our health recovered, it's safe to start shooting up some more bad guys. Including this fellow who is hiding behind the same crate we were and didn't seem to want to check behind it. But hey, that's his loss, not ours, right? I mean, we're a one-man army already, so... In this room up here is the first time you might actually find a shotgun to be useful. There are a lot of enemies at close range, and you don't have all the time in the world to aim at them. So a shotgun is ideal, especially since there's not that many useful places to take cover. Now don't get me wrong, there are places to hide, it's just that there are enemies there as well. There are a couple enemies in this room, and then a few more come in from the doorway. You're going to take damage in here no matter what gun you use. And outside is the perfect, perfect opportunity for your machine gun. Which is why I'm using the handgun, apparently. But yes, there are a lot of enemies grouped together very closely outside in a wide area, with very few places to take cover. The machine gun is generally good for sweeping across areas like this. The shotgun... Shotgun isn't all that useful because they're too far away. The Jeep does make me eventually switch to the machine gun. And then I keep it on for a second. Just a spare second, though. Right up here, there are a ton of enemies in a group that aren't all that intimidating. They're very weak. You go down in one shot from our pistol. And there's no Jeep for backup this time. Your handgun has 16 shots before it has to reload, so if you absolutely want to button mash, you probably can. But it's a lot more effective to just aim carefully. There's some more basic enemies right here around the corner. They won't deal that much damage to you even if you're standing still, so I wouldn't worry about it. And right over here where the orange marker is, is another door, so let's go check that out. The door is locked. You can't get in without a key. There should be a key somewhere. The harbor management building is located nearby. The key is there, isn't it? Luckily, being our surveillance team, Elizabeth is able to tell us exactly where the key is, and up here is our first sniper. He actually has a real sniper rifle. And it will hurt if he hits us with it. This area is absolutely crawling with enemies hiding behind crates, so we're going to take it safe, go on the outer side of all the crates, and scoot all the way back to the edge. The enemies will take pot shots at us, but they won't bother to move away from their hiding positions. There are two reasons we want to come all the way back here. One, it gives us a much better view of everything we'll be going up against, and two, there's another hidden item. So let's just strafe on down to our destination. And what we have waiting for us, assuming there are no enemies around, is yet another bulletproof vest. This one is going to be disappearing far more quickly than the last. Not because we want it to, but because there are a lot of enemies here. I want to mention this right now for no particular reason. I find it weird and oddly refreshing that the screen flashes yellow when you get hit. Anyway, in the middle of all the crates, there's this huge wad of enemies just ready to unload on you. And it's where you're going to be taking the most bullets this far in the game, unless you're incredibly lucky. It may be a little bit hard to tell, but the enemies do use ragdolls, and the game uses the Havoc physics engine for that. I was very confused at first why they used the Havoc physics engine, and then I remembered that the enemies have to go flying somehow. After you eventually find your way through the maze of crates, there's an enemy with a riot shield waiting for you at the end. But he's so closely bunched with the other two that he shouldn't be an issue. And when we get indoors, there's a health refill and a whole ton of ammo just sitting on the counter. And upstairs there are six enemies, I believe exactly six, waiting for us. So make sure your shotgun is fully loaded and don't waste a single shot because this is not a good place to hide. No matter where you hide in here, you're going to get shot at. After you dispose of them all, please take your time to refill your health.
It looks like it's a key to unlock one of the doors. Captain, I'm Machine getting a reading. Gun. An enemy helicopter! This helicopter isn't any more difficult than the last one, which is to say it's very easy, but there is a guy standing on top of some crates waiting to snipe you. So take him out before you shoot the helicopter. After he's gone, the helicopter should be no issue. It doesn't have anything useful to fly behind to get away from your fire, and it barely hurts you. Even if you did take damage, you could just move back inside the building to heal yourself. Let's get back to that locked door. There should be an access way leading to another warehouse. After all that, which is pretty straightforward, there is a single guy up on the scaffolding who will snipe at you. He can shoot you from anywhere up there, but usually it's not too hard to find him. It is worth noting that you do have to shoot between the bars if you want to get at him, but the hit detection on the bars is rather lenient. So I guess we're finally in the terrorist hideout now. As was said near the start, the levels in the FPS sections are rather large, but there are only uh, about five of them. Maybe exactly five, so... I do like the FPS sections a lot, so it's not that bothersome to me. As soon as we open this door, there will be a guy waiting for us, and then another goon to his left. Neither of them are that difficult. Now when we open this door, there's a guy with a rocket launcher. So we need to be prepared for that. There's some guys on the floor below that will shoot up at us. But by staying close to the wall, we can avoid that. We can also shoot down at them, but that tends to be rather difficult, and we do have to shoot between the bars, as I, as I said previously, so... It's usually better just to get down there at them. You can take them all out with your handgun, but doing it with the machine gun is quicker, and they are spread out a little bit. We haven't used our machine gun that much, but we did want to preserve the ammo for something important. There are two very important things in this level we wanted to save ammo for. For one of them, we wanted to save the shotgun ammo, and for the other, the machine gun ammo. If we come over here to the right, we can flank the last group of enemies, which makes taking them out a lot easier. Alright, this is the last room of the warehouse, and I bet it's pretty cramped, so we better get out our shotgun. Shotgun. Damn! They're coming in! Use the sample! What's going on? Get off me! What is this? No! I'm getting multiple readings. Captain, what's going on? Is it some sort of Reload. organism? Reload. Hand grenade. Shotgun. Reload. Captain. Those unidentified organisms. They use the word sample. Those things couldn't be a secret weapon, could they? That's unthinkable. I can't find any information related to those organisms in the military's database. I don't even have any basic biological data on them. Have intelligence look into it. I'm going to continue the investigation here. From the looks of things, I'm guessing those guys from earlier were just grunts. And that is why we wanted to save our shotgun ammunition and those grenades. Machine gun. No matter what I do in this room, I seem to take massive amounts of damage, but I learned to minimize it with the shotgun. This is a very, very long open... well, I'm not sure what you would call this, but it's very long and open, which is ideal for our machine gun. We can shoot the enemies long before they even shoot at us, ideally. 
If you find yourself facing an enemy with a riot shield with a machine gun, just aim for their head. That's the easiest way to get it done. on top of the crane's rails? This game does have bits of platforming and hazard evasion to mix things up. Usually I think they work pretty well. Of course the platforming and hazards are unique to the FPS sections of the game. The light gun sections do not have those. After we hop down, there are either two or three more enemies left just hiding, a uh, hiding around in the crates. They're never in the same spot because they move around a whole lot. I would recommend tracking them down and dealing with them before you move further because they will shoot you in the back while you try. We're very near the boss now. This game does have boss battles and most of them are fantastic and hilarious and awesome for all the right reasons. This first boss is pretty good gameplay-wise. Not the best story-wise, but don't worry, we'll see some pretty amazing stuff later. Still, the boss battles are really where you remember, oh yeah, this game's Japanese. Machine gun. here besides the terrorists? What happened here? Were they fighting amongst themselves? Please be careful. I'm getting multiple readings from inside the warehouse. There's another one! Hey! Let's get them! A man who appears to be the leader is escaping to catch the leader. Who in the world is it? That organism is different from the other one. That type appears to fly in groups. That man is the leader. The terrorist leader has three health bars and is very weak to our machine gun. He has a few attacks of his own. He mostly fires his own machine gun in a sweeping motion. But it's very easy to get behind him while he does this. Looks like I'm gonna have to use this. Reload. That's another new type of organism. You can't identify their weakness. Try each of your weapons. There's plenty more where they came from. Defeat them Reload. before they explode or you'll take damage. Don't actually try to shoot the insects, just keep firing at the terrorist leader and follow him around and the insects won't be able to catch up to you before they explode. Just keep chasing him down. <laughs> 